Um, Anna MacDonald is our commissioned artist uh, for Cambridge and is working with Matt Burnham and his team in Cambridge Junction. And I'm really delighted and very excited to hear Anna MacDonald present her project, which is called A Way of Doing Things. Thanks, Susie. Let me share my desktop with you. Can you see that all right? Brilliant. Um, I'm going to be focused in, in talking about this because, um, as Susie knows, I have to go and do the school run at five to three, so I'm going to get right to it. Um, so it's lovely to be here. I'm really excited to be on this project and to, to find out more about all the other artists' work and to meet some of the researchers involved in it today. So thanks, Susie, for setting up this up. Um, it's a great opportunity. So I'm a, a dance artist. That's my lineage. That's my background. But uh, the majority of my work takes the form of moving image practice. And sometimes that gets referred to as screen dance. So I uh, specialize in participatory work. So I make work, I make moving image work, working with other people using their expertise. Um, and you can see here, this is an image from a project um, uh, called I Will Not Hope, where we invited people to come and uh, catch as many leaves as they could within an hour in a particular tree in autumn. And we, we tend to do this one every year, um, depending on how quickly the leaves go. And what I then do is I film the movement that's produced from these scores. So. I'm really interested in uh, what often gets called pedestrian movements, um, but the kind of resonance of movement patterns like reaching up or moving from here to there or things that start slowly and get faster. So sort of essential movement patterns that underpin our ways of living, but also more broadly, our ways of thinking. Um, so here, this work was with a group of chess players from Macclesfield and what I was filming there was uh, um, the guy on the right is, is remembering his best game and I think he played it in 1989 or something and he's, he was very apologetic, I was telling Susie, because he could only remember the first 38 moves. Uh, and he's doing one with the whites with his left hand and the blacks with his right hand and, and of course producing this extraordinary spatial memory um, but for him that's just normal. And I was struck thinking about today I was thinking well a lot of my work has a sort of pseudo scientific feel to it or the way I construct them can often appear like that I'm very interested in static shots um, where the movement is very contingent and continuous and uh, things can go wrong but it's sort of a document of a chunk of time and I have a lot of work where I shift just one variable. So it'll be one action. So for example, this one there, uh, in walking through a door, but it's repeated 200 times because we invited the whole primary school to walk through the door. So you see these variations going through, which really draw your eye to movement, movement pattern, identifying biases, identifying patterns, what you're drawn to, what's repeated, what's what we change. Um, and then my work is very often site specific and uh, it's amazing how utterly disinterested people can be in that, uh, in the middle of their street. But it, I guess it's it's that movement in, in everyday practice, movement in, in the everyday world that that I'm, I'm focused on. And that might be the movement of systems, the movement of linear pathways through protocols. In this one, I was really, I worked um, uh, with someone uh, who uh, at end of life point in the last year of her life. And we were thinking about the time, her sense of time and how that shifted towards her death. And then how that works with the sort of linear pathways of the clinical trial that, that she was on. So when, um, you know, when I uh, responded to the call for this one, it, it felt very logical to, res to respond to 
the idea of normality through movement. So really looking at the connection between um, familiarity in the body and our sense of what is normal. Um, I'm going the wrong way. So this project, we're, we're using dance and moving image to explore the concept of normality. And it's gonna involve uh, a series of participatory workshops with the public. And by the public, I mean various publics that might be you guys, scientists, it might be um, people who are directly impacted by your research. And it may be people that um, have never heard of this kind of research or not engaged with it beforehand. So there's gonna be a small group that I work with which leads to larger workshops. And then I'll use material in that to create a moving image um, exhibition. So in the workshops, we're gonna explore what we mean by normal, by doing movement tasks together, simple movement tasks that really look at um, finding a sense of normality, trying to leave it for a little bit and then returning to those patterns um, as a way of exploring that felt sense of normality, but also what the edges are, you know, what are the margins of normality when, when something begins to feel not like itself, how we can undo what feels normal. And I guess locating normality is a very temporally situated condition that can be changed because if it can't be changed, then we've, we've got no hope. So, so starting from something that acknowledges change and uncertainty, um, which is, you know, it's really interesting when you're looking at the different knowledges of science and of, and of art and, um, and how that connects to that question of why people might engage with this kind of large scale research or, or not. So we're going to meet in person or probably online for a lot of it. Um, and uh, we're going to do very simple tasks. We're going to perform each other's normal, um, sit on different chairs, do something a hundred times, do a task that we'd normally do in one place, but we'll do it in another place. Maybe we'll gift someone a way of doing things if you have a particularly brilliant or different or unusual or family inherited way of doing things, um, then we might gift that to someone else for them to learn that. We might walk somebody else's walk or learn to tie our shoelaces and in the way that someone else will. So um, that, yeah, I was playing around with this, uh, Let's share this one. Again, this is it's sort of hard to show sketches when you work in film because it looks really real, but it's not, it's just a sketch um, of just what it would be to look at lots and lots of ways of doing one thing. And then I'm thinking, I was really interested and in, we met Krish the other day, who um, is it, did she lead on the first work package, Susie? one of them, yeah. Um, he was talking about the kind of data analysis, this mass data analysis and how we might be drawn, you know, or how we might generate clusters. And I suppose I was thinking if, if, I, if I could film hundreds of people doing this and then identify clusters, so maybe I'd have a group which is all of the people that do double bows or all of the people that start left foot first or all of the people that tie at a particular speed and then I can work with those groups. I can start to identify clusters or biases or patterns and I can pursue and see what questions come up. So what else does that group do if it leads, you know, you do see what I mean, but just applying those research ideas that you're, uh, that I've been hearing and starting to learn about um, to, to art space processes really. Um, and I was saying to Matt, it's very difficult to enter my house at the moment without me asking you to do your shoelaces up. And there's no slip-ons allowed, of course. So um, I'm really excited to meet with you. I'm really interested in, in, in the movement of your research. And I know we're gonna be thinking about that a bit later, but you know, kind of what's, what the patterns are 
both in, in that broader sense of how you might extract or repeat or divide or, um, you know, transcribe, you know, those broader patterns of movement, but also the very concrete things that you do. Because I know very little, and on every advert, you just have blue liquid in a test tube, which you move into a different rack. And, I, and I'm sure it's not quite as straightforward as that. So I, I'd love to find out more a bit later on. Thanks. Thank you so much, Anna. It's uh, really amazing to kind of hear where your head is at right now and the questions that are bubbling to the surface as you're having conversations and getting a little bit deeper into the processes and methodologies that the HCA members are, are using in their work. Um, I love this notion of normality as a temporary as a temporary kind of situated position, I think was your phrase. And I think that's really interesting. Um, I'm gonna encourage you to ask some questions. Charlotte is there. Can we get the Q&A screen up? We have Anna for, um, for another five minutes or so. So we have a first question. Will you connect in any way to the concept of the new normal? and our positions in the home that have been redefined recently, Anna? Yeah, it's a really difficult phrase that, isn't it? It kind of gives me the eebie-jeebies when I hear it, but it, it's it's something that we're all being asked to do, isn't it? You know, and I'm, I suppose from a, from a dance perspective, from a somatic perspective, you know, we're always thinking about integration. So how can we, you know, after a break or rupture or trauma to the body, how can we reintegrate? How can we make new connections uh, which might bypass the ones that are no longer available to us? So I'm really, yeah, I'm really fascinated with how that's going to affect our sense, you know, whether, whether there's more possibility at the moment because there's so much movement and uncertainty or maybe we grab much, much tighter to what we think we know. I, I, it's complicated, isn't it? But I imagine that's gonna come up a lot and, and, and the position of science and uh, our 75% or our 90%, you know, the, the kind of things that we're grabbing onto at the moment, I think there's a particular intensity around what we can rely on, what's, and a nostalgia in, in there as well for what once was, you know. Christmas, the idea of Christmas has gone particularly kind of fluffy at the moment, hasn't it? And uh, suddenly we love three different households, whereas last year we, we went, didn't want to be anywhere near three households. So I think there's, there, it's a very rich thing and it's, it's, it's going to need to it filter through the work, I'm sure. A question from my side is just in terms of the fact that we've got these wonderful members from the HCA community joining us today. Is there any specific ways that you like to engage with the community, Anna, in terms of the R&D or the kind of um, delivery of your programme? Yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a good question. I think I would, I would really love to um, be able to see the way that you work. So some of the movement patterns that you have in your research and, and it, if, you know, the really small movements, the things that you do the most, uh, the, the just sort of, just the way, I mean, I'm not even particularly sure why I want to know this. I just feel very drawn to it. You know, what, what that, what those processes are, what those movements are that you do every day, what the routines are. Um, so a sort of ethnographic, way of, of looking at you really and to hear more about so that that's a very concrete thing I suppose I'd like to, someone to let me come in and film them doing what they do or to describe what they do or take images it could be a variety of ways but to let me in I'd also love to do some some of these tasks these movement tasks these workshops with a group of HCA researchers you know um, so for us to explore normality together through movement and you know in, in a workshop if people are feeling brave and then the other thing is 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 about the movement of the pathways of the materials so how things go from one place to another before they arrive to you for your research you know what 
transformations what and it was really interesting to see esther's work because i felt like there was loads of that in there the kind of different forms and transformations of material through different states before they you know get from a person to data to dots and clusters and uh, and then back out to people again so it, that grand scale movement of systems i'd love to understand more about that okay i'm conscious that we are losing you anna to the school run um anna's going to be back um yeah. to host a discussion in the breakout room for cambridge which would maybe explore some of these things a little bit deeper. Um, so do stick around for that. But meanwhile, we'll let Anna zoom off. Thank you. Bye bye. See you in a bit. Absolutely. And I would encourage, I would encourage our HCA community to be brave, get involved. And if you do want to, feel free to get in touch with me, um, and I'll be able to hook you into the Cambridge team and Anna to um, to progress those interests.